This engine is the legendary 2JZ GTE, one of the most famous engines of all time. Known for its power, its reliability, and its unwavering strength. And it's inside one of the most iconic cars ever, the Mark IV Supra. The 2JZ has been swapped into literally everything. Why is that? What makes this 30-year-old engine so good? And why are some people paying close to $10,000 for it? Today, we have a completely disassembled 2JZ, and we're gonna look at each of these parts piece by piece and examine what makes this engine so capable. Yeah, and once we look at all the parts, we're gonna try to put them all back together and get this thing fired up on the engine stand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Hold on, hold on. Dude, get out of my way, I hate you. <laughs> You think it's gonna fire up? Uh, no. <laughs> Wish us luck. Yeah, cross those fingers, bud. Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, that sounds so sick. Turn us into a bunch of Mario boys. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Now, when you think 2JZ, this is probably the car you think of, the Mark IV Supra. It came with the 2JZ, and not only the 2JZ, but the turbo version of the 2JZ, the Big Daddy, which is also the engine we have taken apart in the shop right now. But the 2JZ under the hood of this car is making 700 horsepower. Ooh. Now, of course, they've had to swap out a few parts, but that's kind of the lower of these engines. The 2JZ can make a bunch of horsepower. This car and the 2JZ in general was birthed of the Japanese Gentlemen's Agreement when they all agreed that all domestic cars should be capped at 276 horsepower. They secretly met in a room and were like, hey guys, yeah. we gotta calm down. Yeah. Or else the government is gonna regulate us and we don't wanna yeah. have them regulate us, so let's self-regulate. Exactly, like it'd be better for us all if we just agreed to cap these things off at 276. Right. But Toyota decided to really make this thing beefed up so that it could handle way more power than that. So say someone wanted to modify their car, it could handle more than 276 horsepower. Exactly. Like 700 horsepower. Exactly. Sure. Now these cars routinely sell for about $100,000 in this spec. Crazy. And part of the reason why this car is so expensive is because what's under the hood the 2JZ. 2JZ, baby! Yeah. This is a uh, dream come true. Check it off yeah. the list, man. As fun as this is to drive and ride, we need to get our hands a little dirty and figure out what makes that engine so good. In front of us, we have a completely disassembled 2JZ, and at the heart of that 2JZ, is this iron block. Mm. Unlike some engines which are made out of aluminum, this is cast out of iron, which is much stronger, which kind of leads to the foundation of this entire engine and why it's so strong. Yeah. It's because of this iron block. And this thing weighs a ton. Come on, help me lift this sucker. Ugh. Got it, Joby. Whoa, Ooh. we're way stronger than I thought. 123.33 <laughs> pounds. Now, one of the reasons why this thing has to be so strong is because inside it, a bunch of little explosions. Got a little mini explosions. They're really called combustions. There is a scientific difference, but you know. But explosions is But explosions sounds better. Another aspect that can affect the strength and durability of an engine are these very strategically placed structural elements. Now these right here are also oil return holes, but they also double as rigidity increasers. And we have them right here on the inside of the block as well. Look how thick those suckers are. Yeah. That makes this block extremely, extremely strong. Just like me. Another point to note on the 2JZ is that it has a closed deck cooling system, and that just references how much material is left around the cylinder walls. On a closed deck, you've got a bunch of material all the way around the cylinder wall, and that lends to robustness and strength. So these can take a lot of power without cracking the cylinder walls. Now, some of the 2JZ GTE has that the non-turbo variants don't are these oil squirters. Now, these do just what they say. They squirt oil up at the piston and keeps your cylinder walls nice and lubricated so things don't wear out too quick. Speaking of squirters, if you happen to squirt some oil onto your shirt, now would be a great time to go hit a sale at DonutMedia.com. That's right, we're clearing out the garage to make room for some new stuff, so now's your chance to get some big discounts. We got all logo tees under 20 bucks. We got a limited time poster and a few leftover rare items. And all orders over 15 bucks get a limited time sticker. 
So go check out our garage sale this week only from today until March 31st, donutmedia.com. This thing is super robust and can take a whole bunch of horsepower. Which is kind of part of what these are famous for. Now we gotta put a bunch of stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, we have to take our bare bone block and start building onto it. We got a lot to do and not a whole lot of time, so let's get jamming. All right, so generally speaking, when you're rebuilding an engine, there's usually gonna be some machine shop work involved. Like in our case, we should really send the block and head out to a machine shop real quick and just get the mating surfaces skimmed, basically to take off all the old gasket material and to make sure we have two really nice flat mating surfaces so that everything seals up nicely. But we don't have time for that, so we're just gonna get things as clean as we can by hand and uh, put it back together, and it'll be totally fine to run in the engine stand. But if we ever wanna make a bunch of power with this thing, we might take it apart again. Yeah. This is just like the trial run. Yeah, that's right. If you have an idea of what we should put this GJ in, leave a comment down below. Yeah, I got plenty of ideas. <laughs> Not you. Do I have to get into the comments? <laughs> All right, now let's talk metallurgy for a second. This is the crankshaft from the 2JG, and it is forged. You may have heard of forged parts before. It's basically a process where you squeeze the metal into its final shape, and that tightens up the grain structure and makes for a much stronger and heavier finished product. Pretty much every crankshaft of all time is forged, but they're not all built quite the same. This is the one from the 2JZ, and it's heavy. It's robust, and I want to see what it weighs. So 60 pounds is the 2JZ GTE crankshaft. For comparison, I've got the crank from my RB here, RB25 that is, and you can tell just looking at it, this doesn't look nearly as robust as the 2JZ piece. It just looks a little bit weaker. Whoa, way off, 44.4. Whoa. Yeah, so that's pretty significant. Yeah, that's... You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> it just adds kind of to the lore of the 2JZ being a strong and robustly built engine. The crankshaft is thick as hell. How much horsepower can you put to that stock crank, you think? Stock crank, I mean six, 700 horsepower, no problem. And I'm sure there are guys running close to a thousand on stock cranks. Now, one of the most important factors when it comes to the health of your rotating assembly, that's your crank, your rods, your pistons, and the block itself, is this area right here. These are your main bearings. So your crank sits on top of that, and a layer of oil is in between that bearing and the crank itself. And one thing that's unique with the 2J is that these are actually pretty thick. The surface area that that crank is sitting on is a lot bigger compared to most engines. And that's important because that means it can dissipate heat better and allows you to make more power just using stock components. Okay. Dropping her in. Yep. Great. She's in. We're almost done. <laughs> Halfway there. <laughs> the way you tighten things down and the way you loosen them is very important. You gotta do them in sequence or you risk warping. So right here we've got the factory service manual for the 2JZ and the factory service manual for any engine that you're rebuilding or working on uh, in depth is very important. In here you'll find all of the things that you need to know like torque specs and the sequence in which you torque things. Just any little thing that you have a question about you can usually find the answer in the FSM. So I'm going to guide Jerry through the sequence with the correct amount of torques. Can you be my angle finder? Yeah I am being his angle finder. Uh, well beep are... when I'm close. Okay 45, 75, 85, beep 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 That looked like 90. All right, so we got the main caps on. Yeah. Next, pistons. The pistons. The piste de, de pistons. So as you can see, our 2J is an inline six engine and inline six engines are pretty cool because they're inherently balanced. You basically have three sets of two pistons operating at the same time. So you got one and six, you got two and five, and you got three and four. And because they operate like that, you have a balance of your primary and secondary forces, making this thing super smooth and also allowing this thing to rev really, really high, which is another reason this engine's so great. Okay, piston number uno. Pistone number uno, okay. Which way does it go? Ooh. We should figure that out. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't fit there. <laughs> but that's a one, and this is a one-two. Mm -hmm. But you see these don't <laughs> figure it right. out. Okay. okay. Compress me. Compress me, Joe. Ready? Ooh, Chihuahua. Ooh, baby. Chica, chica. 
That don't compress me much. Oh, 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 oh. Pistons from the 2J can handle a whole bunch of horsepower, up to 600 horsepower on stock pistons, which is pretty good. There's a couple things that are really unique about this piston. The first thing is that it has a special coating on the crown and on the skirt, and that's to have better heat dissipation and better friction properties. It also has this really cool little channel right here. So we talked about the oil squirters earlier. Well, oil squirts inside that hole and gets filled underneath the crown of the piston, cooling it even further, and then also coating the cylinder when it falls back down. Just like the crankshaft, these connecting rods are forged and these things are beefy as well. Beefy as hell. <laughs> yeah, they're beefy. They got a nice, Thick neck, yeah. which we're debating whether or not that's a term you can give a connecting rod. And they also have, again, this nice wide surface area to give you a lot of heat dissipation through that bearing. To, yeah, uh, and a lot of force dissipation. A lot bearings, of force. Bearings on the rods are taking a lot of abuse. If you look at these, you can definitely see some wear. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, if you were at this point and putting this engine back together, you'd replace these. But again, we're just putting this back together as it was, and it'll be just fine. Daddy's ready with the goop whenever the goop's ready. Okay, ready for the goop. So the 2JZ uses a standard crankshaft driven oil pump. This is the oil pump, and it's got this splined gear in here, which mates up with the end of the crankshaft. And whenever the crankshaft is spinning, so is the oil pump, which means it's constantly pumping oil if the engine's spinning, which is what you need to keep from roaching all your bearings and things. This is, this is the heart of the engine, really. Right, Jerry, there you go. Thank All you, sir. Gooped up for you. Gooped and ready to go. Now, most oral pumps share a lot of similar design characteristics, but it's how an engine manages that oral that makes it either good or bad. Okay, I say oral, all right? People don't like the way I say it. All right, Jer, you got her on there? I got a positive Dow engagement. A. A. Okay, that thing looks great. Okay, we're about to lose some bolts. Hold on, right? hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Hold on, hold on. I don't want to. No, stop. Uh-uh. They'll fall out in order. I, no, they won't. Okay, gerund. Okay, that side this way. And this way, that side, huh? Pan. Going on. This is a pretty beefy pan, huh? Yeah, this is another reason why this engine is so robust is because this engine oil pan slash girdle, you want to call it that, it ties the whole lower assembly and you see these ribs right here? These are like structural reinforcements which keeps this engine from shifting side to side under load. That's part of the reason why you can add a lot of power to this engine because it's reinforced on the bottom end. Laced it right down the middle, Dad! Good stuff, son. Another thing that makes the 2JZ so strong from the factory is the head gasket. It uses a multi-layer steel or MLS head gasket from the factory, and that is what it sounds like. Just multiple layers of steel that seal the engine block to the head. And uh, MLS head gaskets are very strong, and they can withstand a lot of boost. So it's another reason the 2J is so strong and robust from the factory. So we're just gonna install a new OEM one and call it good. We got the head all cleaned up, and now it's time to dump it on this nice new gasket that Joby put on. Yes, oh, thank you. Boom, look at that, beautiful. So the 2J has a dual overhead cam setup with variable valve timing. It's got four valves per cylinder, two exhausts, two intake. And the way these valves work is pretty interesting. It's a little bucket system. The camshaft lobe presses down on that bucket. It in turn pushes the valve down, open, close, open, close, as that assembly rotates. Oh, look at this, Jay-Z right on there. Right on the stick. Or Z, candy cane. Or Jeremiah Zach. Aww. Can't believe it's taken us this long to <laughs> say that. Or so, see, it tells you how narcissistic we aren't. That's right. All right, so we're gonna get some new washers, nuts on our head studs. Torque those suckers down and then uh, keep bolting things onto this. Dude, we're like two seconds, we're gonna be done. Yeah, it's mostly an engine. Yeah. Oh, hey, can you jealous. get the hell out of my way? Hey, dude, you crank your bolts down so slow. Listen, you're in my whole space. 
My name's Joe, but I'm a slow cranker. Listen. I'm a slow cranker. My name's Joe. Listen. Pace. I'm the slowest cranker in all of America. Listen, pace isn't everything, man. It's just most of it. Ow! <laughs> you see what happens oh, when I try to crank right. quick? <laughs> that's quick. Dude, get out of my way. I hate you. <laughs> All right, we're ready to install our intake valve gear here. Now, this system is pretty cool. So this allows you to have a wider range of timing run through your intake camshaft. So on a more traditional setup where you just have a single camshaft, the timing is always gonna be the same no matter what. But inside this gear is another series of gear that's controlled by oil pressure. And depending on what RPM you're at and how much load is on the engine, it'll vary the timing of your intake cam. So when you're really romping on it, it'll advance the timing of the intake valves, let air get into the cylinder faster so you can make more power. As you get higher into the RPMs, that intake valve retards a little bit so there's no overlap, you're making the most power, and you're being pretty efficient. So we can rotate this uh, cam gear and not rotate the camshaft, but that is our degree of rotation. That's how much we can advance and retard our timing. And as a result of this, you can get an extra 60 foot pounds of torque at lower RPMs just by being able to adjust your valve timing. Just that little bit, but it makes all the difference. Ah! Stop it. <laughs> Timing an engine can seem scary because if you do it wrong, you could grenade your engine. But generally speaking, there's always gonna be a procedure for this type of thing. And the manufacturer always makes it pretty easy to do because this is something that needs to be done well every time it's done. It's pretty easy, even though it's scary. It is very scary. This is the fun part. I pull this pin and the hydraulic fluid is going to push on a piston that pushes on this that will keep tension on this belt. Here we go. No, no coming back from this. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Can the editor do an explosion? <laughs> I'm gonna make a bit of a mess, just so you know. That's all right. We got a guy who loves cleaning up messes. That's my boy. <laughs> Jimmy, clean up on aisle 2JZ. Very important part of rebuilding any engine is priming it with oil. And that basically means getting oil to all the bearings and all the parts that need lubrication before first startup. So to do that here with the 2JZ, I think it's gonna be pretty easy. We can spin the engine backwards, suck oil down into the oil pump, and force it into all the areas by hand before we ever start this thing up. She's starting to squirt. Pretty sweet little sound there, you hear it? Mm-hmm. Quick with it. We are finally putting the turbos back on, these little baby twins. And uh, these are pretty trick. You got a lot of exhaust stuff going on here and there's a good reason for that. Down here, we've got a flapper valve that at low RPMs is closed to try to force all the exhaust gases through one turbo, the front turbo. And that just helps it spool up because it's only trying to spool up one small turbo. But then at higher RPMs, that flapper opens and lets exhaust gas flow to both turbos so you can make more power. And when you're at higher RPMs, it's very easy to keep both turbos spooled up. So it's a nice way to reduce turbo lag in the lower RPMs and increase power at the higher RPMs. The impellers in here end up doing about 150, 175,000 RPMs, and that's to make boost, but it takes a while to get them up to that speed. So while you're waiting for them to come up to speed, you're kind of down on power, and that's turbo lag. So if we had one big turbo on here to make 276 horsepower from the factory, it would lag a lot more. So they opted to go with two little ones that they can kind of control to keep lag down at the low end and power up at the high end. And you don't really see this kind of thing too much anymore. Uh, we've made great strides in turbos. Ball bearing turbos spool up a lot quicker and uh, we've just gotten better at getting turbos to make power low down. I got two turbos, I paid for them both, I wanna use them both. All day. Final thing we need to put on is our intake manifold. Now when we pulled this assembly off, we did it in one big chunk, but on the 2J, it's actually composed of two parts. You have your plenum right here, which all the air gets drawn into, and then it separates down into six individual channels, which are your runners. So because the 2J is a six cylinder, we got six runners that go towards each cylinder. Also, this is made of cast aluminum, which is very durable, and it can dissipate heat very well. We're getting close, buddy. Look at this. Whoa! Starting to look like something. Great work. Great work. Just fantastic work. Best work. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Come on, Joe. You gotta admit, that looks pretty fun. You got something wrong with your brain, huh? I'm having a pretty fun time doing this. Come on. You 
pouring oil in with uh, a gadget I've never even seen in my life. And with the intake manifold on, the engine is pretty much all back together except for a few things and nearly ready to fire up. Having done all this, it's pretty easy to see why the 2JZ is so legendary and iconic. They come from a time when robustness and reliability were the pinnacle, and it's easy to see why they can make so much power because of how robust they are. I mean, a lot of cars today and engines are more based around economy and efficiency rather than power. So I don't see the 2JZ getting any cheaper anytime soon, and I think we've, uh, we've learned why. So let's hear this thing roar. I think we did something wrong. <laughs> All right, so as I was helping the boys out cleaning the bench, found these two bolts right here. Hopefully, these aren't too important. All we can do now is keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> Those are old bolts, Jim. You don't know that. <laughs> oh, I know. This did not come from. Yeah, I really don't think those are from this. Everyone's worried, although there is oil on top of them. <laughs> that looks very similar to the oil color. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. That's pretty grimy. Um, but they're so small, how important could they be? Uh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> no pressure, you know. Just the whole office. Joby, Joby, let's prime this. Earlier we primed the pump by spinning it backwards to fill it with oil. Now we're gonna spin it forwards and force all that oil into all the places it needs to be. We're just moving oil. Okay, clear. Yeah, it's getting faster and faster. Because it's lubing up, dude. It's getting lube. Less friction, less friction. Do you think it's gonna fire up? Uh, no. <laughs> no, not a chance. I can have this. So you ready to fire this thing up? Yeah. Adam, you ready? I am ready. Let's hear okay, this Okay, here on. we go. She wants it. She wants it so bad. Oh, oh. Yeah, she doesn't really know what to do. All the air those turbos are making is just hitting me. But heck, we did it. Not only did we take this thing apart and put it back together, but we learned why a 2JZ is so cool along the way. And we got to drive a Supra. I want to thank Kaiser Cars for loaning us this Supra. Check those guys out. We'll leave a link in the description. Huge shout out to Redline JDM Motors for hooking us up with this 2JZ. They've always got a lot of cool stuff in stock. If you want to see us tear apart more engines, leave a comment down below what you think we should do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Instagram, at Donut Media. Zach at Job. Zach Job. At, at Jeremiah Burton. We're different people. Bye. See you guys next time. Boom. Good job.